What's up guys? Registered Dietitian here, Kara Corey. And if you are new to my channel, then thank you for joining me. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. For today's video, I want to discuss a topic that several people reached out to me about when I asked for topics that you wanted a dietitian perspective on. And today's topic, as you saw from the title of the video, I'm gonna be discussing hormonal imbalances and what you can do in terms of your diet in effort to improve your hormonal imbalances. So I am really just going to skim the surface today on this topic because it really is a very involved topic and it's going to be very individualized based on the person which is very true to most medical issues and how they are treated nutritionally which is why i never utilize a cookie cutter approach for anyone hormonal imbalance is essentially just having a hormone in your bloodstream that's either too high or too low. And our body does produce several different types of hormones that are required in our body. I'm not gonna go into all of them today. I'm just gonna kind of go through a few of our major ones, our sex hormones, our thyroid hormones, and our adrenal hormones and discuss those real quickly. But our body utilizes these hormones to help us with reproduction, to help our energy and metabolism functions, to help us grow, and another biggie is our sexual function in our body. So those are just a few of the major things. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, well, how do I know if I have a hormonal imbalance? That is not something I could sit here and uh, diagnose for you. You really would need to work with your healthcare practitioner in effort to probably have some blood work drawn to look at your symptoms and try to tease out if there is a hormonal imbalance going on. So if you're wondering if you do, that's what I would suggest you do. Reach out to your doctor, get your practitioner involved, and have them start to look at some of these, these symptoms that you're having in order to tease that out. The common hormonal imbalances you'll find with women are often with our estrogen and progesterone levels and with men testosterone levels so those are kind of the big imbalances that you see and why we might have imbalances honestly could be a host of different reasons and same with symptoms there could be a multitude of different symptoms that i'm not even going to list them off that could be due to a hormonal imbalance. It could be genetic, or it could also be due to another medical condition you're already dealing with. So if you're someone that's already suffering from another medical condition, um, again, there's a whole list of medical conditions that can lead to hormonal imbalances. So it really can be fairly common to have these types of issues. I'm seeing it more and more just with some of the folks that reach out to me for nutritional guidance, as well as seeing it more on social media where people are saying they have hormonal imbalances. Um, so it's not something to take very lightly. I do encourage you to see your doctor to take a look further into this. I wanna mention as well, if you're watching this video and you're like, I'm good to go, I don't have any hormonal imbalances, you may still find benefit in this video because what you're going to hear throughout me discussing these uh, food options with you guys is that the majority of foods I'm gonna recommend to you for helping your hormonal issues are in general just gonna be really healthy foods that any of us should be eating, should be incorporating into your diet. So if you're not so concerned with your hormone levels, you may wanna stick around just to kind of refresh yourself with some great foods you should have in your diet that are very nutritious and could offer you more health benefits and help you feeling, to help you just feel overall better. So first group of hormones I'm gonna jump into are the sex hormones. As I mentioned, these help uh, manage our reproductive system, they help us with our sexual function in the body, and the most common hormones there are estrogen, progesterone, uh, testosterone, and those are the biggies. So here are my top uh, recommendations for foods you should be incorporating into your diet if you're feeling like you do have a hormonal imbalance in this area or you, if you have been made aware that with labs being drawn that you do have hormonal imbalances. So the first uh, food you can incorporate 
are flax seeds. Flax seeds are not only anti-inflammatory, but they also contain phytoestrogens. And what phytoestrogens do is they basically mimic estrogen in your body. Um, they actually, they bind to our estrogen receptors and what they do is help excrete any excess estrogen that we may have in our body. So flax seeds have a number of health benefits there and they also, you're gonna be able to buy them in the seed version or in the ground version. I recommend you do the ground version in effort to get the most benefit from the flax seed. Otherwise, your body doesn't digest the seed as a whole. The second good food for your sex hormones is going to be wild salmon. Wild salmon is actually a great source of vitamin D, which is a fat-soluble vitamin. We really can't get vitamin D from our food. We mostly produce it due to being in the sun and sun exposure. However, getting that vitamin D in through wild salmon can actually help uh, increase your testosterone levels. So that's another good one to add in. And again, there's other health benefits there being heart healthy fats, anti-inflammatory, just a great um, food for you guys to consume in terms of health benefits. Next food that's great for your sex hormones is gonna be broccoli. Broccoli is known as part of the cruciferous family. So when you think of our cruciferous vegetables, you think of those kind of gassy producing foods like cauliflower, um, coleslaw, uh, Brussels sprouts, things like that. But the sulfur containing compounds that are in that cruciferous family, especially in broccoli, actually help neutralize any carcinogens that are gonna be in our body, which you know, between the air we breathe, the foods we eat, there's there's gonna be some level of carcinogens within our body and that can help neutralize that and therefore help with regulation of your sex hormones. Next food is lentils. I think lentils are often underutilized. However, they're super easy to throw into the mix with your food. You can actually get them at Trader Joe's, like already cooked if you're kind of a lazy girl like me when it comes to meal prep but lentils are an excellent source of fiber. With that higher fiber content in lentils, that can help decrease any excess estrogen that we have in the body. Lentils also have a high zinc content, which uh, higher amounts of zinc can actually help with increasing testosterone levels. Next up on the list are sunflower seeds. I love just snacking on sunflower seeds or you can buy sunflower seed butter is actually also very delicious, but sunflower seeds have a high content of vitamin E and vitamin E is gonna help with your progesterone levels. So that's a great one to throw in the mix. And the last one for sex hormones are sweet potatoes, which again, another great healthy option. Sweet potatoes are high in our vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 helps with our liver detoxification. Our liver detoxifies our body. So anything that is gonna help improve that detoxification process helps us get rid of anything excess we don't need. So that's another great one to throw in the mix. Next up, we're gonna talk about your thyroid hormones. This is a very common one. A lot of people do struggle with thyroid deficiencies requiring medication to regulate their thyroid. However, I'm just gonna touch upon some foods you may wanna throw into the mix. Um, it's not to say doing this is going to replace your medication if you are on some, however. Uh, with your thyroid, that is your uh, regulation of your energy levels and your metabolism. So when we talk about thyroid, we're often talking about your T3 and your T4 um, and balancing those levels out. So to go into some of the foods that can help with thyroid function, first off is seaweed. And I know a lot of us don't eat seaweed, but sometimes part of having uh, thyroid imbalances can be due to an iodine deficiency. And it can be a misconception that um, we don't need any salt or things that taste salty in our diet, and that's actually incorrect. So something like seaweed is very high in iodine and can be very helpful for your thyroid. Uh, I love seaweed salad and that's the only idea I can give you guys that I can think of for how I consume seaweed is if I go have sushi, I love seaweed salad. But um, if you guys have any other creative ideas for how to get seaweed in your diet, please comment that below. But I really do love some good seaweed salad. Next food item for balancing your thyroid is going to be Brazil nuts. And Brazil nuts have an extremely high content of selenium and it really only takes 
a little handful, like three to four Brazil nuts. They are a little bit bigger than your average nut, but it only takes three to four to get in and actually meet your selenium needs. So that's another great option that's going to help you, again, get in these micronutrients, but help balance your hormones. Next up is an odd one that maybe, again, a lot of you guys don't consume, but sardines makes the list for assisting with thyroid levels. Again, it's got a high selenium content as well as a high B12 content um, and does have a little bit of iodine in it as well. So that's another option. Um, Bruce Wayne eats sardines every day and it sure does keep his coat shiny. <laughs> And they just smell like tuna fish. I don't know. I've never ate them, but I'm sure they're not bad. But a lot of great health benefits there. And uh, I'd say fairly affordable, but not if you're eating them like Bruce Wayne is. Next up for assisting with your thyroid is going to be spinach. So you guys can get um, regular fresh spinach or frozen if you're like me and you waste it and it's expensive but spinach is going to be a great source for you of iron as well as your B vitamins and you're probably hearing kind of a common theme with these foods they're very rich in your B vitamins which are your your B vitamins are very critical in your energy metabolism in the body so that's why getting in any any more food that you can that have these B vitamins in them are just going to assist with your thyroid regulation. Um, last on the list is quinoa, and quinoa I think is is becoming more popular, but quinoa is extremely nutritious. It's got a, gr a lot of great properties there beyond just being helpful for your thyroid. But again, it's very high in that fiber content as well as being high in zinc. Quinoa also offers a complete amino acid profile for you as well. So if you're someone who is trying to get in non-meat protein sources, this happens to be another good option for you guys too. The last group of hormones I'm gonna discuss are gonna be our adrenal hormones. Our adrenal hormones are a gland that actually sit on top of our kidneys and they do assist in a lot of our stress management within our bodies, if you will. Our adrenal hormones have a huge essential function in our bodies. Um, with relationship to stress management, uh, blood sugar regulation, blood pressure regulation, as well as helping to produce your sex hormones. So there is some correlation there between your adrenals and your sex hormones. Now when we're discussing our adrenals and we're talking about stress and sleep and energy, those hormones mostly include our cortisol, our adrenaline, our norepinephrine, our DHEA, as well as aldosterone. So those are your big uh, hormones that are produced from your adrenal glands. Again, how those can get out of whack, as I said before, it can come down to a lot of different factors, but poor diet, poor, you know, poor diet and nutrition, sleep, stress, um, chronic medical issues, all those things can take a toll on impacting your hormone levels. So in regards to foods that can best help you improve your adrenal function. The first one is one of my favorites and that is red bell peppers or any kind of bell peppers to be honest with you. I just happen to like red. They have an extremely high vitamin C content. So that vitamin C content is essential to adrenal function because what it's going to do is help during those times of stress that oxidative damage that can occur on your cells, in your body, that's gonna help to regulate it and replenish those vitamin C levels within your body. Second on the list is kale. You should find a way to make friends with kale, whether it's putting it in a bowl of salad or mixing it into a smoothie. Kale offers, again, a full spectrum of nutrients and nutrition, as well as assisting in your adrenal hormones. Kale, along with bell peppers and a lot of the other food items you're gonna see in this category, are going to have higher vitamin C contents, and they're gonna help with that oxidative damage that's gonna be caused on your body and helping to replenish those vitamin C stores within your body. Um, next up is another one of my favorites, the good old avocado, which not only is a great source of heart healthy fats, but it's also got panathenic acid in it, which is a B vitamin. 
that again can help with that energy regulation within your body. The B vitamins that are in avocados are also going to help with fighting that stress that might be going on within your body to help regulate that hor- those hormones. Next up are almonds, which there's been a whole host of research done on almonds as well and the benefits they can help you with, but almonds can help with your blood sugar regulation and sometimes we see changes in adrenal hormones if you're someone that's struggling with blood sugar control. So adding in things like almonds and avocados, like I just mentioned, can help with leveling the blood sugar out when you're consuming it. Again, when I say these foods, uh, note that you can't just consume all the almonds. So don't open up a container of almonds and eat the whole thing. You still have to practice good portion control, whether your food is super healthy and nutritious or whether it's not, portion control always applies. So you do have to kind of keep that moderation in there as well. Next up are pumpkin seeds and pumpkin seeds have a good source of magnesium to them. So what happens during times of stress, similar to vitamin C, though the magnesium in our body gets depleted very quickly during stress. So making sure you're consuming foods that are high in magnesium, such as pumpkin seeds, are gonna be a great way to replenish those stores and help with hormones. Next on the list are eggs. And when I talk about eggs, I'm talking about eating the whole egg. And whole eggs are a great source of choline, and choline is the precursor to acetylcholine, which is essential to our nervous system and assisting in our nervous system. So um, beyond that, there's a lot of B vitamins within the egg yolk itself. So that's great to have. And yes, I'm a dietitian and I recommend egg yolks. That's like an old school myth um, that you shouldn't eat egg yolks. But I think most dietitians agree that there's tons of nutrition in there that is great for so many different functions within your body. So Uh, Yeah, you don't want to be eating six of them a day, but get in one or two egg yolks, you know, uh, depending on your cholesterol levels and your history of your cholesterol, there's so much good nutrition. So make sure you include some egg yolk in your diet as well. Lastly, for your adrenal health is uh, sea salt is my last recommendation for you. So if you're someone who is struggling um, with your adrenals and you have a lower aldosterone level, what can happen with lower aldosterone is you end up depleting your sodium that much quicker, uh, therefore needing to replenish that. So adding in some sea salt, again, moderation with that, but adding in a little, a little sprinkle, a little crank of sea salt to your meal, in your fluids, uh, things like that. If you are struggling with this, that's a quick and easy way to replenish your sodium levels and your sodium levels are gonna play into the fluid balance within your body. So that's something to keep on hand. And again, you don't have to be afraid to use it. Um, Unless you're someone who's got super high blood pressure, there's really no concern there. You wanna make sure you're, you're, you're getting enough sodium in the diet. You don't need to be afraid to get sodium in the diet. All right, guys, that is gonna wrap up this talk about hormonal imbalances and what you can do with nutrition to help better your hormonal imbalances. If you guys found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a like, comment below any future videos you would like to see discussed, And we will see you in the next video. And having a higher vitamin, fuck me, in the ball sack. Are our, our, are our.